Welcome to How to Win by Beacon Control. Hey, this is me again, Ben, aka KittyWR, and I have seven tips on how to win by Beacon Control. Let's get right into it. On number one, mid game beacon play, and this is a game changer for sure. And I like to do this with Loki, as you guys are watching right now. Um, five minutes mark is approaching and our team was really down on beacons and especially on maps like Springfield uh, It's a long map and beacons are also spread out and using Loki's incredible ninja stealth ability pair that up with a lot of speed a lot of mobility you're still able to control beacon gauge by capping multiple beacons Notice how in the beginning of the footage, I only had one beacon, but now we have four beacons. And obviously, to win by beacon control, you have to have more than two beacons. And sometimes firepower and tankiness of a robot isn't always the answer. Also, in the beginning of this footage, I only had one beacon. Now I'm on my way to fourth beacon. On number two, build your own defender. And there are various type of beacon defenders. Personally, I like to incorporate uh, Calamity and Scourge. As you get closer, you do more damage. And also having some sort of lockdown mechanism in your hangar will definitely help you defend certain beacons. After all, if you want to win by beacon control, you have to defend beacons. And moving on to number three, pilot skills to capture beacons. And as I mentioned before, normally to win by beacon control, you have to have more than two beacons. So when you need to capture a beacon, certain pilot skills definitely help out. And let's look at several examples here. Um, check out these two pilot skills, Adamant Mechanic and Raider Mechanic. One on the top repairs your robot while you have less than two beacons and one on the bottom repairs your robot once you capture a beacon. And another example is Adamant Guardian. If enemy controls three or more beacons, uh, the robot gets increased defense points. And let's look at one more, Adamant Roadhog. It increases your speed when enemy has three or more beacons. Number four is specifically about beacon locations. Defend two beacons that are closer together. Now, certain beacons are very close together, or if you capture one beacon, one another is easier to defend. For example, in Shenzhen, if you're able to capture beacon D, there are a lot, lot of openings between the buildings and you're able to defend the center beacon much easier. Apps like Dreadnought can be pretty tricky because if you end up capturing um, beacon A, which is right next to enemy spawn, and if you capture beacon D, um, those two beacons are very hard to defend. And obviously your teammates not being able to support each other because they are so far away isn't gonna help you control beacons. And controlling beacons like C and D or beacons like B, E, and C can be smarter choice to defend in order to advance in beacon gauge. Number five is cut out unnecessary encounters when you have three beacons. So basically three beacons is all you need. All you need to do is maintain at that point. But a lot of players tend to be aggressive, even move further to capture another beacon. And sometimes if you are too aggressive on beacons um, rather than just maintaining three beacons that you have you and your teammates can then lose too many robots and not be able to defend later on in the game there are players that solely chase damage but sometimes you need to hang back and three beacons is enough set yourself up and be in more advantageous position where you can defend let enemies come to you rather than you go towards enemies number six overtake together i mean overtake beacons together now it sounds a little bit too obvious however i think it's very important so i think it should be in the list now overtaking together you have to move together a lot of players tend to move alone into a beacon and players that move alone can easily be outnumbered by enemies. So in order to be efficient in overtaking beacons, you have to move together with your teammates. Sometimes because you can't communicate 
uh, you have to look at what your allies are doing and when they're trying to overtake a beacon don't hesitate and move into a beacon to overtake the beacon so as I said before in order to win by beacon control you have to have normally um, more than two beacons so ability to overtake beacons as a team important factor to remember in order to control beacons last but not least on number seven especially on beacon rush um, I guess it only applies on beacon rush um, spawn and defend so a lot of people tend to not ditch their bot when it's necessary and I think it's important to make certain decisions sometimes it's difficult to make that decision um, sometimes you have to look at the minimap when enemies are approaching kind of sneaking in ninja style on your beacon you have to spawn into that beacon to defend otherwise certain beacons are so hard to retake in those situations it's best to spawn and defend It also applies in this footage as well. We are desperate for a beacon. And as soon as I saw that on the minimap, I spawned in to eliminate this falcon. That was everything I had prepared today. Thank you guys for watching. And if you didn't know, I have a channel of my own. Search up KittyWR or check out the link down in the description. See you guys on the next one.